the second part is next question from mom. It says, hey guys, what's the proper response when someone, um, when someone, be it a client or another SEO wants to know how I get results. I don't want to mention RYS, ID, uh, so like the ID page and other secrets of the battle plan. My strategy so far has been to show them past successes and leave it at that. But my downfall is when I charge for the done for you services and they ask what the money is for, how can I better my approach? Well, all right. So the way that I handle it is the only time that clients see anything or, you know, prospects when I'm, when I'm presenting a proposal in my proposal, I will, you know, put some of the entity assets down and, you know, as part of the overall deliverables that are going to be delivered with the setup process. And then for my monthly ongoing monthly services, uh, you know, I, I mentioned like link building um, traffic. So, cause I run Google ads for traffic, uh, you know, display ads and such. But typically, I've, I very rarely ever get any questions about what they are specifically when they when they do, then I'll just show them an example of what like a done for you, uh, or what a what a uh, Google Drive stack looks like from from a, an, another client or from a lead gen project that I have or something like that. But I don't get into explaining how everything works, because it's really none of their business. Like, honestly, as long as I can produce them produce results for them, it, it would be like asking uh, you know, any other industry, prof any other professional in, in another industry for what their proprietary methods are for doing whatever their job is, whatever their profession is. And so, uh, you know, I, I typically will, will, will try to provide enough information to satisfy their, you know, their, their curiosity without giving away the farm, because otherwise, you know, it, it most of the time their, their eyes are, they're not going to understand it anyway. So what's the point in wasting your breath? Um, so, so typically what I'll do is, like I said, on the proposal side of things, I explain through a video email, Muhammad, I know you're very familiar with that, but I explain through a video email, an explanation of what the proposal is, what the deliverables are and what an expected, um, you know, time frame for results is and then from that point forward all the other stuff that i continue to order through mgyb to get clients results is just part of the monthly retainer so it never comes up again does that make sense occasionally a client will say you know because i do provide monthly reports and i i for not every month but most of the time or at least every other month I'll, I'll provide a video email with my monthly report so i'll kind of go over the reports and show them you know where progress has been made where i see new opportunities where maybe some some things have slipped a little bit. You know, I try, always try to be real honest and I like to use video emails to do that. That usually satisfies any questions so that I don't, very rarely get follow-up questions. And when I do, then I'll just, you know, try to explain it a little bit further. But like I said, I, I think it's important to, uh, you know, be able to explain what it is, you know, show that you can produce results without showing exactly how, if that makes sense. Um, Marco, maybe you can articulate this in a, in a way that, is a little bit more clear than the way I am. No, I mean that what you said is clear to me, but let, let me, let me put it this way. When I give a client a proposal and they give me something like that, say you're talking to an attorney. I mean, are you going to ask him to, to break down how, why he's charging you 50% of whatever the lawsuit settlement is, for example, or when you, when you walk into a car showroom and you're going to purchase a car, do you ask for a, for a breakdown of what all the auto parts come to and the labor and the expenses and every year? Do you ask the dealer all of that information or, or do, you, do you go into the negotiation for that car on, on the price? Okay, they'll charge you 20, you offer 18.5 or whatever and then you, know, and you meet at somewhere in between. How I see this is it's ridiculous for a client to expect you to give to, to give them a breakdown of everything that you're going to do. And there's absolutely no way and no reason for you to be saying, I'm charging you for done for you services. What you're charging for is results. That's right. What you're charging for is what you're going to do for these people. They're paying you for your expertise in the matter as far as getting results. Now, if they want the how, if they want the how, that's consultation. And that's way more than they, than they could ever pay because you're actually going to teach them how it's done and how to get results. And it, it, it's not something that, that's done overnight. I, I was just talking to an attorney the other day and – well, I wasn't talking. I emailed. And what she wrote back saying, you're speaking a foreign language to me. And I say that's why when I hire a, an attorney, I don't want to know or learn the law. 
regarding whatever it is that I'm hiring an attorney for. That's right. Just as when you hire an SEO or a marketer, you're not expected to know everything that the SEO or marketer is going to know. Otherwise, you'd spend all of your time learning marketing and SEO instead of concentrating on what it is that you do, do best, which is the law. So, Mohammed, again, so, and, and we've gone uh, over this before with you, you have to focus your presentation on the results that you're going to get, what it is that you're, that you're going to do, not how. They're not entitled to how. They're not ever That's right. entitled to how. They're entitled to their brand, of course. They're entitled to tier one branded. Although we call drive stacks and G sites part of tier one branded, they're not. That's part of your how. That's how you get results. They're not entitled to that or anything else for that matter. Press releases, it depends on how you're charging for them and, and how they're focused. Yeah, they're, they're entitled to, to that uh, media page, but nothing else. As a matter of fact, that IFTT, IFTTT uh, uh, profile that you're going to create that's going to trigger the T1 branded, they're not entitled to those logins because that's part of the how. I never give them that. You're not, you're not entitled to my recipes or whatever the fuck they call now because I don't do them. I just hire mgyb.co. But this is really important and why you should guide the information. And, man, I have a call that we recorded with someone. We got to get permission from that person, I think, and from all the people involved so that you can, hear, you can listen to the, nego the negotiation and listen to me go through an actual attempt at closing. Closing the client, it was the, the first, second call with the client. And I tried to close them right there. Unfortunately, it, it didn't go like planned. And he, he didn't say no. He said he'd think about it, but that's almost like a no. Anyway, Mohammed, I hope that helps. But you're, you're, you're focusing on the wrong things and you're mentioning the wrong things, definitely. Yeah. Bring them back. If, one, if they get off success, you bring them back. If they get off what it is that you're going to do for them, you bring them back. And you bring them back to, 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 to what it is you're going to do. I'm going to get your phone to ring. I'm going to get your phone fills, uh, form fills, and I'm going to get people on your, in your website. Anything else that I have to tell you, I have to charge you for. And, and then you set your hourly price, 500, 2,000. It doesn't matter. You make it high enough so that it hurts if they have to pay you consultation. There you go. Um, so, yeah, and just to kind of follow up, like I said, you know, the, the, the done for you services that I continue to purchase for clients, uh, you know, that's just part of the monthly retainer. And I factor all of that in when I cr first present the proposal so that I don't have to go back to them and charge them for additional items, uh, you know, unless they ask for additional stuff, if that makes sense. So it, I typically, you know, I work right into my monthly retainer fee when I'm going to be spending on link building and embed gigs and press releases and uh, my blogger to publish posts for, for the project. So all of that is factored right in right off the bat so that I just continue to order the services and pay, you know, VAs and things like that to fulfill uh, my obligations as per our agreement, but I don't have to explain it away because I'm not asking for additional money. It's all part of the original agreement. So, okay.